All right, last question, Chris. So we're building a passive house, first ever passive house in Georgia. So what if somebody has an amazing house? It's 100 years old. This one was 100 years old. But they just completely finished renovating the inside of the house. From early conversations we had three or four years yeah. ago, because I did ask you this question. Yeah. You're like, well, that's okay. You can just do it all from the outside. Mm -hmm. So what would you do to a house? Because you're leaving the, the finishes on the inside. What would you do to a house to make it passive light and, and make it perform better than new houses on the market today? but also where someone doesn't have to completely tear their house down and start over. Well, I'll give you but, an example. But, yeah. I, li I, live in a, I live in a house that was built in the sure. 80s. Sure, sure. They, they had that, that the foam, they didn't use sheathing, they used the foam sheathing, yeah. so I don't really have sheathing. Yeah. I've got lead and bracing, so it's not falling over. Yeah. The roof maybe has a year or two left on it. Siding, for the most part, is okay on two sides of the house. The other sides, I probably need to replace it. So, I mean, most people would just like leave the windows in place, maybe mm -hmm. get a new roof, because yeah. you gotta keep the water out. They would tear the siding off and maybe just put new siding on. It might get some house yeah. wrap. Yeah. So in that scenario, so, like what, what would you suggest? Well, we have a project that we're doing right now that's um, similar to that. It's built in the 80s, just the same. And they're looking for high performance. This passive house light is how do you define that? What does that mean to, to you? But let's just say high performance. Let's just, we want it to be a whole lot better than it is and it's way beyond code, okay? To really do it, there's not been able to come up with a strategy where you can only do one thing at a time. This owner asked us, can we just do the windows? Is that a good way to start right now? Is that gonna give us a big improvement? Can we just do this? Can we just do that? If you do it in phases like that, you're changing the environment, the, the microclimates within your home, then your mechanical system is now saying, okay, well that up there, there's no air leakage or, or thermal lo heat loss up there. So the, 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 the proper way to approach all of this, and this is why a lot of these projects don't happen, mm -hmm. is to do, the real way to do it is to approach the entire thing, to do one piece at a time or to do only one piece, like when you do just the attic, in houses yeah there's some improvement but you're creating a different environment inside every time you do one little thing you're create you're changing the environment you have to be aware of what changes it could be super tiny almost nothing to a major change you change all of the south facing windows to a really low solar solar heat gain coefficient well there's your that's a huge heat load yep. that was there that's no longer there well that changes your system now it's probably oversized so yes, it would be good to also change the system. So in the, in the project we're doing now, we're starting with interior renovations. We're just moving walls and you know changing the configuration inside, but it's not changing the environment. The next phase, this is, this is how they're phasing, is interior first. And then the second phase is that we'll re remove the entire shell, all brick, all roof, everything, because it has the, the, yep. the insulated sheathing sheathing the insulation yeah. on the outside of the it's, two it's by sheathing. fours um we're going to remove all of that put some put some sheathing with just like this the zip system sheathing and then we're going to put the insulation to the outside we're creating a brand new shell for it all the control layers are then controlled and then a new mechanical system to work with that new all of those new loads new windows new everything essentially we've left the structure yep but as we peel away what we may find is rotted yeah, two I'm by sure. fours or this or that that we have to replace as well. So this is where it gets into that discussion of do we tear the house though. down or do we just, you know. Like, like when, I was, when I was pulling some of the siding off in place and replacing it, I was kind of hoping for some rot. I was yeah. going to give me an excuse to do it yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But it was so leaky, it dried yeah. out. Yeah. So that's that's the other thing. Is like these poorly built houses last sometimes a long time unintentionally because they're yeah. so poorly built it mm -hmm. some of the some of the physics helps them last longer because they, right. they can dry out. Yeah. So You know, the thing is it's just evaluating you have to evaluate every project one yep. at a time. There's value, there's cost, there's comfort. There are so many things that are a factor here. If your health is at risk because the house leaks so much and it's allowing outdoor air coming in or the mechanical system is sucking air from outside or any of, if any of these factors are there and you have say asthma or you have something well, it may, the value may be there to go that extra mile to say, you know what, I can spend less time at the doctor because I'm not breathing all that outside yep. air all the time. Or, you know, I mean, there's so many, so many things to think about when you're approaching. The, there's never a silver bullet that just says, oh, one thing here you can do on every house. Well, they sell those, those plug-in ozone generators. Yeah, right, like yeah, that's yeah. 
Yeah. That, that, you don't have to do any of this if you just plug one of those things in, right? Yeah. And the fix to all and humidity, uh, fix to all humidity is just throw a dehumidifier at it. You know, like, I mean, that's a good solution. But don't they have those? Um, more to it than... Basically, those 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 uh, salts that you can hang in your in your closet, yeah, yeah, the stones yeah, that yeah. absorbs yeah. all the yeah, the mothballs. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah no, that, that works great. But like, just sponges, just to hang sponges throughout your house, and it'll yeah, soak. Yeah, dehumidifier won't do that. I'll do all that. Yeah, no, it's yeah. So, well, cool. That's that's a good answer because I think. People, when they think about the exterior, they don't think about how that affects the HVAC, affects right. the HVAC system. Right. If you replace an HVAC system before you do all that, then the system's oversized yeah. at that point. So well, that's, that's the challenge. There's one analogy that sort of works. Um, and that is, if you say you lost your pinky toe, there's, you know, there's, there's balance in every one of your toes. Mm -hmm. That one little loss of a pinky toe or, or something changes in there, that affects how you walk or it yep. affects your balance just slightly or something. One little thing can change the whole dynamic or the whole the whole way your body works to as it has been working. So just the the tiniest little thing can cause cause that, and you just want to be aware of that. And sometimes, or even if it's temporary, you sprain your ankle. It's like yeah, a roof that's leak. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Got more humidity. That's right. So just you know the the butterfly effect, right? Yep. It's like butterfly here affects the weather in Africa, or yeah, it, it all, all works on the houses too. So. <laughs> yeah. So well, thanks for that, that explanation. Amen. All right, everyone, we really appreciate Chris coming out to do this presentation, answer all these questions. For the comments section, if you want to check out his channel, LG Squared. All right, we've got a link in the description below, and appreciate you guys taking a look. Yeah. To, at this house, we've got the virtual house, which is going to be in multiple phases. We've got the as-built, where you can go through and see what it looked like before we got to this point. As soon as we put all the mechanicals in, you're going to see all the mechanicals in before the drywall, and then once everything's put in place you're going to see the final reveal of this 1920s makeover and Exciting. um finally it's be quite quite yeah quite a journey all right thanks chris appreciate it thanks, man.